math friends, today we're talking about properties of multiplication, which has nothing to do with it raining cats and dogs. I just thought this slide needed some decoration. So you know what multiplication is. Properties just means stuff you're allowed to do when multiplying. Let's take a look. You remember back in the day when we learned that 2 plus 3 is really the same value as 3 plus 2. We could add in either order. And then did you say to yourself, hmm, self? Could I do that with multiplication? Well, in this case, 2 times 3 equals 6, and 3 times 2 equals 6, so it does work. Does it work for all numbers that we multiply? Yes. Yes, it does. And if you're wondering if it works for division, no. No, it doesn't. Okay, moving on. So here we have some more addition. We know that if we add 2 and 3, we get 5, and if we add 5 and 4, we get 9. Or, if we added 3 and 4 first and got 7, then we could add 2 and we still get 9. Or, if we add the 2 and the 4 first and get 6, we could still add 3 and get 9. Pretty cool. But, I know what you really want to know. Does it work for multiplication? Well, let's find out. If we do the 2 and the 3 first, we get 6 times 4. Yes, that works. We multiply the 3 and the 4 first, we get 12 times 2, still works. And what about those outside ones, 2 and 4? Multiply those, then times 3, still 24. So that works too. So when you have three numbers that you're multiplying, you can do the first two first, or the second two first, or the outer ones first. Okay, we have one more little property here. Now this just looks like a multiplication fact. Where is a property going to come into play here? Well, it comes into play if maybe we don't know that 8 times 7 is 56. Well, you remember when we started modeling multiplication, we would have an array, and we would have rows and columns, and then the total number of squares or items in our array would tell us the answer. Well, we could also get that answer by breaking that 7 into a sum, like 5 and 2. So now what I see is I have two rectangles next to each other, one that's 8 by 5, and one that's 8 by 2. Now I can see that my first rectangle is 40 little squares, and my second rectangle is 16 little squares, and bada bing, bada boom, it's still 56. So, what we've learned here is, when we want to multiply two numbers, we can break up one of the numbers into a sum, and if you're wondering if you could break up the 8 instead of the 7, yes, yes you can. Good question. Now let's do some examples. Okay, first example, if we know 7 times 8, then we also know which of the following. Well, this was the first property we talked about. Remember the 2 plus 3 equals 3 plus 2? This one was the multiplication version. But if you didn't remember about that property, you could solve and then find the answer. So 7 times 8 is 56. If I check 8 minus 7, that's 1, so that's not correct. If I do 8 plus 7, that's 15, and that's not correct. If I do 8 divided by 7, it's 1 and something, not 56. And so that just leaves me with my correct answer, 8 times 7. Okay, moving on. We want to know how we can solve 4 times 2 times 3. So this is the one we talked about we could do in different orders. So each of our answer choices starts with 4 times 2 equals 8. We're good with that. The question is, what do we do after that? Well, we still have that times 3 hanging on. So then it's just 8 times 3. So that's our last answer choice down here at the bottom. Okay, one more example. Which expression is equivalent to 6 times 9? Okay, so here we are breaking our 6 times 9 up. So in each of them, we're offered the 6 in the first spot. But then what's going on in the second spot? That's the one that we need to be a sum. So... A sum of 9 could be 4 and 5, or here, 5 and 4. But these down here, 6 and 9, those don't add up to 9. And here, 9 and 9, and those don't add up to 9. So it's got to be one of the first two. As you can see, I've marked the operations in bright colors to help you see. This one is all multiplication. This one is multiplication with addition in the middle. This is the property we talked about. So, in summary, grumpy cats in birthday hats bring me joy.